Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Nicholas Merton, and welcome to part two of my series on SQL and data analytics for beginners. Guys, I'm ready to jump in today. It's gonna be super exciting. We're gonna finally get to learn a little bit of the SQL syntax. Uh, we're gonna be able to uh, learn about some streamlining processes with MPGM and to create a database um, and really start creating our tables and adding values inside of them. So it's gonna be really fun, and I think we're gonna learn a lot of it. So let's not waste any more time and get right into it. Uh, the first thing you're going to want to do is look to the left side of your navigation um, on the PGM and, uh, application and click on the plus sign in your servers. Now what's going to pop up is your server that you downloaded, PostgreSQL 9.6 or whatever version you downloaded. Now there will be an X on it and don't worry about that, that's normal. Click on it and it's going to pop up a window where you're going to have to type in the password you applied in the setup process. Now remember I told you to write it down or keep it very simple to where you can remember it. I already signed into mine, that's why there's no X on there. I just kept it simple and just put password. So you can do the same, do it your way, whatever works fine. After you've logged into it uh, and uh, certified that you've got the password for it, you can uh, see that it says databases, login group roles, and table spaces. This is what you should see on the left side. And if you click on it, you're gonna see all these statistics and data on the side. You really don't have to worry about, it's just how everything's pretty much running with inside the server, so. Uh, anyways, we're going to go ahead and click on the expansion for databases and you should see something that says Postgres. Now this is the standard database that comes within the server that we installed. Uh, it's a functioning database. We could add tables to it. We could add values inside of those tables and really start logging in information. But I want to do it from scratch. I really want to make this experience fun in learning SQL. I don't want to go down using the database they gave us. I want to go ahead and create our own new database. And you know, if we're starting from scratch, we better have a concept that we can go under so we can really enjoy learning it and make it practical, but fun at the same time. So I thought, why not pretend like we're making a database or we're running a server that's storing all of our information for an oil company. And I thought ABC Oil Company would be a good name. So we're ABC Oil Company. Let's create a database to store all of our information and our tables inside of it. So we're gonna go here, and this is what's really cool about PG Admin, is we don't actually even have to touch the syntax when creating a database. We can just simply go here to create and click on database. Now you might have to give it a second, it might depend on your computer, but just give it a few seconds to start up and it'll pop up a window, and all you have to do is type in the name of the database. So in our case, uh, we're ABC Oil Company. Now here's something to keep in mind. When you're making databases and you're making tables, there's a few rules you should really just follow that are both professional and also can avoid errors within the syntax and uh, try, just trying to do daily functions within SQL. Avoid capitals, like capitalizing letters, and then also avoid using spaces, okay? So you don't wanna type your database name to be ABC Oil, oops, sorry, we don't know all capitals oil company. You don't want it like this, okay? As much as that looks professional, looks nice, what we want to type it like is in all lowercase, ABC underscore oil underscore company. So we use underscores to use as spaces. And this is, you know, some people use this um, in general uh, to space out things on computers, but this is just, it's better for the syntax, okay? So we are going to go ahead and save that. And once that's done through, we've got our new database here. Uh, it's good just to always just refresh. Uh, you're gonna have to do that when you enter and uh, create new tables or add uh, values in those tables. It's just good to do that after you create anything new. So we've got our ABC Oil Company database. However, we don't have a table stored in it. And we're now gonna finally create one. We're gonna create one within the syntax uh, and the query tool inside of PG Admin. So how do we access that? Well, make sure you've got ABC Oil Company selected. It should be highlighted like this on the screen. And we're gonna go over to Tools and go to Query Tool. Now, inside the query tool, I recommend uh, expanding it a little bit, just dragging it down like that. We have a text box where we can start entering in the code for uh, SQL. And like I said from the get-go, SQL is a very simple language at its base level. And doing the base things like creating tables are not that difficult. So how do you create a table? That's it. You've literally told, you've literally stated that you want to create a table. It's no complex term. Uh, that's the beginning part of it. Now, uh, you also notice that I typed it in all capitals. And you're going to see throughout uh, when I type syntax in SQL that any kind of statement or kind of like function or anything that's like a major part of the syntax of SQL, you want to type it in all capital letters, okay? 
Um, it's just professional, uh, but when you're using names and things like that that aren't a part of the syntax, you can type it in lowercase. Um, but yeah, like I said, keep it in all capitals. It's just a way to keep it to where it stands out. Um, and it lets PG admin read a lot easier uh, rather than keeping it in all lowercase. So just a professional thing. It won't really mess anything up, but it's good just to keep it in capital. All right, next uh, we have to type and take put a space there. And we're going to type in a name for it. Well, what is this table going to entail? Well, I think that we should focus first and foremost on creating our customer list. You know, who are the clients that we're dealing with and who we're working with? So we're going to create customer underscore list. And remember, use underscores if you're going to space out uh, certain names uh, with multiple words. So next up, we have to put in open parentheses. And we're going to go down by pressing enter. Now you don't have to press enter. However, like I said, I'm going to teach you how to properly, uh, at least the standard way that most people type in SQL, keep it very organized and easy to read. Um, so we first have to add in our first column. This is going to be really cool. So we can start actually adding in the columns uh, where we expect people to insert values into. So what's the first thing uh, uh, that relates to a customer? Well, you might think the name would be the first thing, but in the world of SQL and storing information in databases, the first thing you're going to want to start with is an ID for the customer. So for example, any kind of website, uh, Facebook or Twitter, like I was giving you for an example, the large databases that store your accounts have an ID number for you. And you're probably one of millions inside the network, if not billions in the case of Facebook. Um, but in our case, we're starting as a new company. So we have one customer um, that we'll enter in uh, for the first uh, value and stuff. But to signify that we want to have an ID, well, we got to give the column name, uh, the column a name. So in this case, it's going to be ID. And this is, you see it highlighted. It's not some, actually, we should keep it lowercase to be consistent with what I was saying. Um, within name values, uh, it's better to keep things lowercase, kind of like how we do in tables. Um, so we're going to keep it at ID, and it, it might look, even though it's highlighted, like it's reading it as something, it's simply just a name for a column. And what we're going to do is put a space, and then we're going to put the uh, type of value we're trying to get. There's different types of value sets. And in our case, we need a number, a numerical value for that ID. Uh, to signal, so we're signifying that it has to be a number. It can't be text or anything like that. We want a number one through a billion. Um, so in this case, we want an integer, which we would just type in int. So as you can see, it's very short, sweet, and to the point, and SQL reads it pretty fluently. Um, and then next, we have to set what's known as a constraint. Now constraints are um, kind of rules that you have to follow when you're entering a value. And for example, kind of like how we have integer. It's, it's, the integer doesn't count as a constraint, but it's, it's signaling that we need a numerical value. And in this case, constraints are extra rules that you can kind of set on top of the value set. So I'll give you a few examples. I'm not going to run through all of them. Uh, in this case, we're going to be using uh, something known as primary key. And primary key is a combination of two restraints. It's one that states that it can't, it's a, it's a not null value, um, con, or sorry, not null constraint, which means that uh, the, the value cannot be blank. So we can't leave it empty. We need to have a customer ID. And along with that, within primary key, we're also using the unique constraint. And unique is stating that we need it to be a unique value. No two customers can have the same ID number. They need to have something that identifies them. So primary key is a really good thing to use when you're using ID. Uh, it's pretty much standard in SQL, and it's a good way to signal that we're going to have a unique non-blank value for our ID. So now that we're done with that column, we can put a comma, and we can move on to the next value. In this case, uh, what would be the next thing we should focus on? Well, of course, it'd probably be the name, the thing we originally thought of doing. So as we did with ID, keep it lowercase. and we're going to set the value type. In this case, it's a text value. As you can see, it highlights it just like it did with the integer. Uh, and the third thing we have to do is our constraints. So in this case, we don't need a unique value. The name could be similar. Some people sometimes have similar names. Uh, or maybe we're just recording the first name, and a lot of people might have the same first name. In this case scenario, though, we're going to use not null because we don't want it to be empty. We don't want it to be an empty field. We need to know the name of the customer to identify them. And then next up, we're going to add an email address so we can contact them or at least store their contact information. This is also going to be a text value. 
and we're also gonna say not null because we need to have a way to contact them. Now, we could add tons of different columns for this, but I'm just gonna keep it relatively simple at the start, and we're gonna close our parentheses and add a semicolon. All right, now this is a full create table statement at, at its base level. This will work through once we run our query, and there's two ways you can do this in PGM, and they're pretty nice. You can press this little execute button up here, which is a little lightning bolt, uh, which is perfectly fine. Or you can uh, press F5 on your keyboard, which is a quick shortcut to do it. So I'm just going to go ahead and press F5. And it says that we created the table and the query returned successfully. So that's good. So let's go ahead and refresh our um, database. And we'll go down to schemas, go down to public. And we see the table category down here. If we press tables, we've got our customer list. And if we expand that, we can go to columns. And voila, we have our ID, name, and email columns. However, we're at an issue here. We don't have any rows of actual values to put into these columns yet. So how do we do that? Well, we're gonna go back to our query tool. Let's start by closing a little bit of this. And make sure we got ABC oil company selected. So we're just gonna go back and delete this. And we're gonna start from scratch. And we're gonna start inserting values into our table. So how do we do that? Well, you gotta use the insert into statement. And what you're gonna do is um, select the table. So you have to specify what table you wanna put it into. Insert into table, and the name for our table is customer list. So we'll do customer underscore list. And then we need to signify that we're putting in values. And we're gonna do just like we did when we were creating our table up open parentheses. And then we're gonna go down and start adding in our value sets. So we're gonna enter in our first customer ID. Um, and in this case, we need to enter in the ID of the customer. So we're a new company. Our first ID is um, you know, gonna be number one. And then we put a comma just like we did in the table. And then we need to signify a name for the guy. And I'm gonna be very simple. Uh, and I'm just gonna go with John Smith. Now, see what I did there with a the text value and it, how it differs from an integer. With text-based values, you need to have apostrophes around them, okay? So it signifies, so you can use spaces, you can space things out and stuff like that, and it keeps it under the text-based term. Uh, whereas an integer is just a number. So we just had another comma there. And then we also have to do the same for the email because it was a text-based value. So in this case, it'll be, his email will be john.smith at gmail.com. We'll close that off with the parentheses or sorry, excuse me, with an apostrophe, and then we'll close the parentheses and put a semicolon at the end to execute the query. So we can run that, and the query returns successfully. So let's go see if our value is inside the table. Well, we're gonna do that also inside this uh, SQL um, syntax in our query tool. And how are we gonna do that? Well, if we wanna select information, we used a select statement. So we're gonna type in select, and then in this point, you can type in a specific column name from a table. Um, the select from statement is kind of nice and it's very flexible, but we're gonna keep this bare bones right now and just get everything that we've typed in so far. We really don't have much information. So we're gonna type select star and star selects all of the information, all of the columns and all of the rows from the table. So we're gonna select all from, and then we're gonna select our table customer list and we can go ahead and run that and down here the data output will show our table at its very base level we haven't entered in much but it shows everything that we put in the ID of the customer which is an integer we have the name which is a text value John Smith and we have the email which is a text value and it's john.smith at gmail.com so we've got our first customer laid out in our table and we can actually start to visually see it right here so this is how you create a basic table. And it's functional, it's easy to use, and it's not that difficult to really learn the syntax behind it. I would recommend going through and practicing a few times about creating a few tables. Uh, however, I think a lot of you will get it right away and you can move on to the next video where we'll be covering uh, much more about the syntax of SQL and probably adding some extra values along the way and maybe creating another table. So 
Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. You guys are welcome to go to the next video if you you know feel comfortable with this. If not, just rewatch it, cover it a few times, and really get the the language down. It's not that difficult. It's fun to use, and uh, once you get an understanding and you learn how to really structure it out, you'll start to learn it a lot better. So. Anyways, guys, thank you all so much for watching the video, and I'll see you all in the next one.